I'm ready for my private wizarding lessons, Dumbledore. D Dumbledore, what are you? D Dumbledore, that's not my wand. That's not my wand. Dumbledore, no! Hello there, and welcome to day two of the Harry Potter extravaganza. Today, we'll be the beginning of the reviews of both the books. And the movies, I will spread them out over the whole, like, uh, extravaganza time period. So I'm, it's not going to be one after the other. But I will do all seven, book and movie, together. So, today we start, obviously, with Sorcerer's Stone, or Philosopher's Stone, the first in the series. This is the book and movie that started off. The book that started everything, started this phenomenon. And the movie that started the franchise that furthered that phenomenon. Now... The Sorcerer's Stone is the true innocence of the Harry Potter series. The introductory to some of the most endearing characters I've seen in literature. I mean, I, and I do, I read a fair amount, and these characters, even the way they're transposed onto the screen, they're just so lovable. They're, it's like you've known them your whole life as soon as you see these movies, as soon as you read that text. It's, it, there's a connection to these characters. That's, I think, what makes Harry Potter so successful, aside from the story, is these characters that, you know, inhabit these stories and make them interesting, make you care about what happens in the stories because you care about these characters. And the way they introduce them is, is I really like Jo's style, is she, she starts off, um, usually in each book, especially here because it's the first one, as a kind of a third person, almost like she doesn't know what's going on. Uh, when they start with the wizard, she kind of starts by describing these things as, you know, these oddities for the, you know, the modern and the muggle world. Uh, you know, how out of place they seem with these people walking around in cloaks. I really like how she does that. Um, the way she introduces the characters kind of already in the middle of what's happening, not spending time in introducing things completely, but kind of like Letting you infer on your own, and then you slowly and slowly get more bits of information. At this point in the series, in the beginning, everything's really straightforward. You know, the, the stories are short because the stories really can't inhabit anything much longer. It's a short, fun read, and it's a short. Well, actually, not that short, but it's it, it's a very entertaining movie as well. There's there's not too much fluff. You know, there's no beating around the bush. It's straightforward. Uh, it, even even going for like the the inventions of the wizarding world, the things are rather straightforward. There's no deep explanation to them. There, it, it's almost kind of show offy at first about all these magical things, which is totally fine. But they they are um they're 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 almost kitschy because they're 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 goofy. They're a little over the top, and I still love it though because it, it's almost like being a kid again when I read them. When I was a kid, you know, I, these things were absolutely amazing. But as the series matures, these things change, you know. And I think that's very reflective of what Chris Columbus does in the series. He creates this almost goofy, over the top. It, it, it has the feel of like a um, almost like an Elizabethan. Uh, time period with the way the magical world works, and I think that, you know, once we get into Prisoner of Azkaban, even in the books, in the rest of the movies, things have that, that older feel, uh, up until Prisoner of Azkaban, they get more modern, but in, especially in Sorcerer's Stone, things are kind of goofy, in the movie there's a lot of cheesy lines, but it, it's, it's so innocent, and it's so fun that it's, it's, so easily forgivable. These are the young characters. The way they, I mean, even, even if you look at the posters for Sorcerer's Stone, they're so much more light-hearted than the, the any of the rest of the series. You know, it's it's, it's a lighter blue as opposed to the really dark uh, contrast blue we get in the later series. Even at that, the immense amount of detail she puts into this world, Joe, uh, it, it is amazing. Like if you look at the school, the school list, the book list, like the, the way. She she, she shows all of that, and she creates all these names and all these books, and all of them have some later meaning in the series. All of them come back. I mean, she really does know how to work a story by introducing plot devices early on in the book. I mean, she'll sort of start talking about things that won't be brought up again until the end of the book, but at least you have that some introductory, so you don't feel like these things are pulled out of thin air. Especially when we get into the later series, you know, we have a lot of things that are mentioned in passing that become important later. Later, and I really like how she does that. I mean, like with Nicholas Flamel, um, it's on the back of the 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 trading card, the the chocolate frog card, and even Grindelwald is mentioned on there. So you know these things that come into play later on. It's great character development. It's great story development. 
And in this series, that's or it's somewhat goofy for being a kid series, but that immense amount of detail is what makes these books so great. And starting here, and oh my god, the movie, it is, it's just fun. It really is. As I said, it's a little cheesy at times, but the action, I mean, the, the, the effects, I mean, you can tell some of the stuff CGI with the troll, and uh, but it's, it's all good. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe, he's just, I mean, for his first role, I really, really, really did a great job. Um, Richard Harris's Dumbledore, he really only was around for two movies, but wow, he, he played the, Dumbledore makes a change, uh, he, he definitely has more, like, vigor and vitality in the later books, so here, Richard Harris plays the perfect Dumbledore. Robbie Coltrane makes Hagrid the awesome character we already know, we already knew from the books. I mean, every, everybody loves Hagrid. Hagrid is, Hagrid is, oh, he's up there. Sorry, you can't see. But Hagrid is awesome. I love Hagrid. And Robbie Coltrane just makes him, oh, just someone I just want to hang out with. He just seems like the, it just, he makes this awesome, nice, lovable character. And then Maggie Smith, who plays McGonagall, you know, perfect. she nails it. She really does. Uh, the whole cast. Really, I, I, I know Joe wanted all English actors, and they made a good choice because they bring some of the best English actors that there are working today into this movie. Um, later on, obviously, Michael Gambon, you have uh, Jim Broadbent, but here, wow, I mean, I, they really get these characters, the actors, to perfectly emulate the characters off the pages, they, they're, they're all you could have imagined, so they, in that respect, this movie is perfect. The movie and the book have their flaws, um, but, you know, they're still lovable. I, they're a great way to start a series. They really are. They get you intrigued. They start up this Voldemort story. Uh, I think a Voldemort story that, you know, obviously continues on. But really great basis to branch the series from. Has has a lot of uh, information in it for the short book it is uh, that is definitely expanded upon in later books. You know, they, there's a lot of callbacks to things that are kind of mentioned in this book. Uh, like Dumbledore when he talks to Harry at the end, you know, mentioned later on in Order of the Phoenix. Uh, really awesome, awesome stuff. And the climax was done very, very well. Um, that's another thing. They always have awesome climaxes. I haven't yet developed a rating scale that I like for books. Uh, eventually, I, I should really get one, but I, I still can. I feel like I, I would be unfair. I'm just not, you know, skilled enough in book reviewing yet. Um, but... The movie, 8.5 out of 10. I know you're thinking, like, you know, I'm just a Harry Potter geek not giving the movie full marks. But, yes, there, there are some flaws in the movie. But I still love it. Uh, you know, that's the thing about Harry Potter. It's a collective uh, experience. You can't just... I can't just say I like... You know, I, I just love this movie. You know, I, I love this movie in respects to the other ones. But I still don't think it's a perfect movie. Uh, the series in the whole, though, you know, very close to perfect. So... I hope you enjoyed my review of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone book and movie. Tell me what you thought. Uh, as this, as the movie reviews go on, uh, they will definitely get more expansive. I know this one wasn't very long, but they will definitely get more expansive because there's more to cover. I have a lot more to say about upcoming books and movies. So look forward to that. I'm not sure what video is coming next. I think tomorrow I'm going to do a review of Cars to prepare for Cars 2. I'm ready, you know. Just not looking forward to see Cars 2. I just, I don't want to see the bad Pixar movie. Just, just disappointing to see their perfect record tarnish. But, no, I still, I am not going to go in with a closed mind. I will go in with an open mind. Uh, so, yeah, probably Cars review tomorrow. Friday, Cars 2 review. Or, I, I don't know if I've seen it. Uh, anyway. Uh, then, starting up over the weekend again, I will start the extravaganza continue on. So tell me what you think. Tell me if you're liking it so far. I hope you are. Any suggestions uh, for the extravaganza or for the channel in general, leave them below. I love to hear what you guys have to say. You've been commenting a lot on the extravaganza so far, and I'm loving that. I love getting feedback. It is awesome. So, uh, yes, see you guys later for Cars Review.